This tutorial looks at issues such as overshoot and oscillation for underdamped second order systems. Again, students are reminded that we expect them to have gone through the earlier videos in this series or equivalent material elsewhere, and the purpose of this video is to provide tutorial questions so you can check your understanding and ability to solve the key issues. You should read the questions, pause the video, and attempt an answer before you view the solutions provided. Quick reminder of the background, we're talking about underdamped second order systems so they can be written in this normal form d2x dt squared plus 2z to omega n dx dt plus omega n squared x equals cr or here's the equivalent Laplace transform. And the key properties for a step response with zero initial conditions, we must emphasize that, are the following. We know the formula for the overshoot e to the minus z to pi over root 1 minus theta squared. We know the ratio of 1 overshoot to the next overshoot is e to the minus 2 zeta pi over root 1 minus theta squared. We know what the time between peaks is. It's pi over omega d, where omega d is omega n times the root 1 minus theta squared. So these are the formula that we are going to use. Question then. Determine the peak overshoot corresponding time and decay characteristics and hence draw a rough sketch of x of t for the following. And again, we'll remind you, we're assuming zero initial conditions. So now's the time to pause this video while you try these questions by yourself, and I will go through some sketch solutions. First one then, you'll notice we've reminded you of the key formula at the top, because it's a bit much sometimes to remember those. So what have I got? For this one, I've got omega squared equals five, 2 zeta omega n equals 2 tells you that the zeta equals 1 over root 5. Omega d is going to be root 5 into root of 1 minus 1 over 5, which gives you 2. I can do the overshoot. The overshoot, using this formula up here, I'm not going to rewrite it. So the overshoot, if you plug in zeta 1 over root 5, you get 0.2. 1. I can do t using this formula here and using this omega d here and I get 1.57. I can also do O squared which is 0 0.04 and O cubed which is 0 0.008 and there's not much point doing any more. So now we've asked to do a sketch. Now what I'm going to do for convenience is I'm going to write these vertical lines as t, 2t, 3t, 4t. You can do it differently if you like, where t is given here as 1.57. So now I can mark in my key points. At the first t I've got an overshoot of 21%, so I'm going to go through this point here. At the second t I've got an undershoot of 4%. So I'm going to go through some point about here. And at the third overshoot, sorry, the third point, T, I've got an overshoot of about 1%, which is really, really tiny. So my sketch is going to do something like, I must apologize if it's not perfect, but you'll see, you get something like that. And hopefully you're convinced you've got an indicative sketch of the behavior very, very quickly with a minimal of computation. Next one. So I'm going to go straight in. By the way, I'm going to cross those fives. I'm just doing it here for convenience so you can see what the characteristic polynomial is. And therefore, by inspection, you see omega n squared equals 2. 2 zeta omega n equals 1, which gives me that zeta equals 1 over 2 root 2. I can also do omega d, which is going to be um, root 2 into 1 minus 1 over 8 and what you get there you need to calculate over this one because it's non-simple form the answer is 1.32 I can do the time remember that's that formula there pi over omega d and I get 2.37 again you'll see you need a calculator for some of these computations I can do the overshoot by substituting in the zeta that I've got here into this formula 
here and you find the overshoot comes out at 0.31 so overshoot squared is going to be approximately 0.09 and overshoot cubed is going to be approximately 0.03 I'm not going to be more precise because if you can sketch with more precise decimal places than this then you must have an interesting graph again I'll use these vertical lines just to mark as t's because it makes life much easier and I know what t is here. So now first overshoot 31% first undershoot 9% next overshoot 3% and so I can get my indicative sketch there it is. Okay if you want to put the numbers in so you can see what's happening 2.4 and this one's going to be about 4.7 and so on. Next one. So again, what I'm going to do is cross these numbers and put some numbers underneath, which just indicate how I'm going to get my normal form. So that tells me that omega n squared equals 12, 2 zeta omega n equals 2, or zeta equals 1 over root. 12. I can get omega d is going to be root 12 into the square root of 1 minus 1 over 12 and that's going to give me root 11. I can go over here I can get the time using this formula here pi over omega d and that gives me 0 0.95 and I can get the overshoot again by plugging in this zeta value into this formula here and what do I get? An overshoot of 0 0.39 an overshoot squared is going to be 0 0.15 overshoot cubed 0 0.06 and in this case I can even go up to overshoot to the 4 0 0.02 so again we put the times down here and you'll see I'm using multiples of capital T for convenience so the first overshoot was 39% so that's all the way up there first overshoot undershoot was 15% which is down here next overshoot 6% which is about there next undershoot 2% about there so you'll see I've now got a curve a bit like this <coughs> okay again hopefully you've seen a representative sketch very very quickly with time scales and overshoots and everything you need. Next one, the only difference here really is we've used Laplace transforms but otherwise the problem is exactly equivalent. So I've got omega n squared equals 0.9 2 zeta omega n equals 0.6 so zeta equals 0.3 over the root of 0.9 I've got omega d equals 0.9 into the square root of 1 minus 0.3 squared over 0.9 which comes out as 0.9 <coughs> so over here I can write t equals 3.49 using this formula here I can write the overshoot equals 0.35 by putting this value in here and now therefore I can get overshoot squared equals 0.12 and overshoot cubed equals 0.04 and I think after that they're starting to get on the small side now this one you'll see the time scales being put in so I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful so t there 3.5 2t is going to be 7 which is about there so we'll mark 2t. 3t is going to be about 10.5. So let's mark that there. Okay. So what I've done is I've added lines which tell me where these multiples of t are because that makes life a bit easier. Now the other thing is this particular question has got a steady state of 0.27 over 0.9 which equals 0.3 so the steady state is here so we have to be a little bit more careful so what's an overshoot 
of 35% on a steady state of 0.3. And you'll see that's going to take you to roughly 0.4. I'll let you put it in the calculator if you want to do it exactly. A 12% undershoot okay, is going to be around 0.26 to 0.27. And so that's going to give you somewhere around here. And a 4% overshoot, that's now going to be quite uh, quite difficult to mark. It'll be something like that. So if I now do my sketch, you'll see what's the nice thing. I've actually put in real numbers. You'll see I haven't normalized it. The steady state isn't 1. I haven't normalized the axis down here. I've put in my actual times. But I can still get a sketch that's indicative of the behavior fairly quickly and easily. So final one. I'll go through this quickly. You see I've got omega n squared equals 85 and zeta equals 7 over root 85. I've got omega d equals 85 into the root of 1 minus 49 over 85 or you can solve that to see that you get 6. I can write my t equals 0.52 and because the zeta is actually quite large, exactly what zeta comes to, and you'll find it's roughly 0 0.76, and that is fairly large. So you won't be surprised when you calculate the overshoot and find it's only 2.6%. It really is very, very small. And you remember when we did the studies that if zeta was around a value of 0 0.7, the overshoot was negligible, and that was why it was often a good value to choose. So now, what I can do is I can find the steady state. So the steady state is 17 over 85, which is 0 0.2. So there's the steady state. I can see this 0 0.5 is pretty close to the first time constant. The overshoot is only 2%. So I'm going to get something that pretty much does this. Now for completeness, we'll just show you how you can use MATLAB to check your answers. So if I go at the top here, you'll see I can use dsolve to solve, this is the first example, to find the answer, I can solve for zeta, and you see there it was 1 over square root of 5 for the first one. I can solve for the overshoot, plugging in that formula, and I can solve the numerical values of x and plot them. And if we go and look at the figure window, there's c, the two are pretty much the same. In other words, our sketch was a good representation of what you're actually going to get. The second example here, you'll see again, I can use dsolve. I can find zeta. Oh, I put a semicolon behind that. I do apologize, you won't see it now. Let's do it again. There you are. Zeta, 0.3536. I can do the overshoot. There it is, 0.3. I can do the damped frequency. I can do the key times. And if I want, I can do some plots. And we go to the plot, and there's the plot you were to get for the second example. Now, if you had Laplace, you might do things slightly differently. So if I look at the last one, there was the zeta. OK. There was the overshoot formula. There was omega d. It was just given. There was t. And I can use this step function in order to get the plot. So if I go and look at the plot there, you'll see again a minimal overshoot at around 0.5 seconds. So again, if I just bring this across, so you can see the sorts of MATLAB commands that have been used. And you can pause the video if you want to look at these commands in any more detail. So tutorial questions on normal forms. And we've shown how to sketch the solutions by computing overshoots and corresponding.